Hello, in this episode we are going to add inline editing of attributes in Ruby on Rails application. So here's an example. Here I've got a first name, last name, date of birth, and so on, and I've got a list of customers. And whenever I click any of the values, I will have a form to be able to update the value. And if I click outside, then the value will automatically be persisted. Or when I click update. So this way you don't have to redirect your customers to a new page whenever they want to edit uh, any single attribute. And actually it is a uh, popular concept uh, when building uh, applications where you have to handle large data sets. If you just Google inline editing, you will often see some kind of table where you can uh, just click some kind of value and uh, you will have a form to update this value. Now, previously, around five years ago, a popular solution to do this in the Ruby Rails application would be the gem best in place. But uh, it is based on jQuery and basically like uh, it is kind of outdated. And now you can easily do this kind of functionality using uh, Turbo, uh, so Hotwire Turbo. So let's add this kind of functionality to a new Ruby on Rails application. I will uh, check out uh, another branch. And here I have, uh, let me start the server. Here I have the same application, but without this kind of inline editing feature that we are going to add now together. If I go to the roots, I've just got a resources for customers. If I go to the schema, I've got just a table for customers that I have scaffolded with first name, last name, and so on. And uh, I'm now on the index view of the list of customers. And I want to be able to click on a single attribute and edit this attribute. So let's go to our views. Now, uh, I have, of course, Hotwire already installed, and here is this customer view. So if I change anything here, then it will be visible here. Okay, so let's uh, wrap the whole first name thing into a turbo frame tag. Let's say turbo frame tag. Let's name it first name. Do. And let's turn the first name, the thing that we actually want to change, into a link to. So let's say link to customer first name that will redirect to edit customer path. So edit customer. And actually this edit customer is a shorthand to write edit customer path. So this and this is kind of the same. So okay, here now I have the option to click on the customer name and it will redirect me to the edit form. But it did do a full page redirect because it didn't find a matching turbo frame tag. So I need to have a turbo frame tag uh, first name in the edit view. Now whenever you click edit, it uh, opens the edit page, it renders the form, and uh, inside the form we have the attribute that we need. So it is the first name. But now let me just copy paste the form for now and uh, name this form, let's say, inline attribute form html.erb and uh, instead of rendering the uh, normal form, I will render the inline attribute form. So inline attribute form. Now for now it is the same form, I have just uh, copied it but later on there are going to be some changes. So okay, now we want to just render this uh, first name editable without the full page refresh. So we're going to have a matching turbo frame tag with the, the name first name inside this form. So here we can kind of do it around this first name attribute. Here we will wrap the first name into the turbo frame tag and when we click uh, the first name, then we have this form rendered. So we have this actual field rendered. Now whenever I change something, I don't have a way to change it because uh, the form width hasn't been rendered and the submit button hasn't been rendered either. So uh, I would want to actually wrap the whole form into the stub frame tag. So I would uh, put the end statements around the form and if I click first name, you see I have the whole form rendered. Obviously, I don't want the whole form to be rendered. I want only the first name, but let's just try to update something. So let's say Yara, for example, and click update. And the changes have been saved. And you see, I didn't have any page refresh. I will now refresh the page. And uh, well, the value has been saved, but they have been reordered because by default, uh, they are reordered by updated as app, I guess. So I will add some kind of default order. So order 
operated at the sending. Okay, so let's say Julia update and it works. But again, I want to be able to update on this name when clicking. I don't want to see the whole form. So to do so, I can uh, say that I will pass the name of the attribute inside this uh, uh, link. So I will say attribute will be first name. And this way we will have uh, params attribute available inside our form. Let's try to show this params attribute. Let's say equals params uh, attribute. So again, in this link we pass the params attribute, that will be first name, and here we will be able to see the name of this attribute. So it is first name. And now based on this params attribute, we are going to render the fields that we need. So we'll say if params attribute dot equals first name, then we are going to render the first name. And we're going to wrap uh, each of the fields into a similar statement that is dedicated to this particular field. So uh, for last name, we're going to render it if the attribute in the params is equal to last name and so on. So let's do it for phone and for description. And let's add all the end and end statements. Okay, let's now refresh. I click uh, the name and you see I have the form just for this uh, particular name. So I will click update and it worked. So the same way we can copy it for each other attribute. So I have uh, this turbo frame tag and uh, yeah, I would need to copy the turbo frame tag with the, the attribute name. No, at the moment we actually have just one turbo frame tag. So uh, yeah, there would be a lot of duplication. I would need to copy this turbo frame tag and uh, maybe name it like uh, attributes or whatever. Let's see if it would work. Let's uh, give just one single name to all the uh, turbo frames. So I will do it for the last name. So here we'll have customer last name and attribute last name. Will it work or not? So uh, first name, last name. And you see it uh, didn't render really correctly because, uh, well, it would be good if the step frame tags were kind of unique, uh, the names for unique here. So we would need to add some kind of standardization. So we have uh, a list of uh, attributes and we want to have dynamic names for the turbo frame tag so let's uh, go to our customer dot rb and uh, have a list of uh, editable attributes so it will be first name last name dob phone and description and uh, let's render uh, a collection so we'll say equals no actually customer editable attributes dot each do attribute and for each attribute we'll have this kind of turbo frame tag so let's just move this code uh, inside we'll have that turbo frame tag with the name of the attribute then instead of the first name or whatever we will dynamically render the name of the attribute so here we'll have the attribute link to customer attribute, edit customer, and the attribute is going to be the attributes name that we get from this collection. And now we can delete all the other stuff from this view. We don't need it anymore because we have the list of all the attributes that we pass here and we enumerate through all the attributes that we've got. So let's see if it works. Okay, I have the first name and the end run the inline, it rendered on a new page because I need to have this dynamic name of turbo frame tag inside our form. So here I will just say uh, params attribute will be the name of the turbo frame tag. So you see, it's going to be kind of dynamic. Now again, I'll uh, update the name, I'll update the surname, 
and refresh and it has been saved. I can do it the same for any other customer. I can do multiple fields at once. So save and save. And you see for some uh, attributes that don't have a value, so it shows just some kind of random URL to our edit uh, path. So not to have this random URL inside our link to, we'll add something uh, customer attribute dot presence or edit. So for the blanks, we just have the edit button that you click and you can add something like the date of birth, for example. So I will click update and it works. Okay, now will it run the errors at the moment or not? Let's uh, see. I will go to our customer and I will add some kind of validation. So I will say validates uh, first name, presence, true. Now I go back, I will take this customer, I will remove the first name, click update, and you see we had a full page redirect and an error. It is because in this form we would also need to say that we are passing this attribute to, to the URL. So we would also add form with modal customer URL will be, we've got our customer and attribute will be Rams attribute. And the method for update is going to be patch. So method patch. Okay, now let's go back to customers. I will remove all the values, click update, and you see the error has been rendered in line. So looks good. Now it is already up to you to style the error as you wish and place it anywhere you want. So error rendering also works correctly. And now I think a final touch would be to be able to save a value whenever clicking outside of it. So to do so, we can just simply add uh, on change this dot form dot request submit. And I would add this to each of the attributes. So now whenever I click the first name, I will say Yaro, I will click outside, and it has been saved. For this last name, I click somewhere else, and it has been saved. Date of birth. And now you can even, if you want, remove the form submit, because uh, each of the values is automatically submitted whenever you change it. So Yaro, whatever, I click the other one, last name, but this way, uh, you would uh, not be able to have uh, multiple edit forms open at once. So it is already for you to decide whether you want to have a submit button or you want uh, the form to be automatically submitted whenever you focus outside of the field that you're editing at the moment. So I guess that is it. And uh, yeah, let's just final check, see to it that we can still create a customer. So we still have our normal edit form that is still available. And what if you want to still be able to edit uh, all the attributes at once? So both inline editing and uh, editing all the attributes at once. Let's click edit this customer. And you see we have an empty form because uh, it's still, if we go to our edit form, it tries to render this inline attributes form. So let's have some kind of condition here. Let's say uh, if params attribute dot present, then we're going to render this inline attribute form, else we're going to render the new form. So uh, let's see if it works. I'm going back to customers. I can edit a single field. I will go to show, go to edit, and you see the whole edit form also works. Now uh, this number is out of range. It is already a different error that is not related to uh, our form, but basically that's it. So uh, you see, without messing with controllers, without uh, anything, just by using TurboFrame tag wisely, we managed to add inline attribute editing. That is a really powerful feature, and that would usually, without using Hotwire, require a lot, a lot of JavaScript. So I guess that's it. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.